tonight's special Thursday night draft night edition of the BS Podcast. Brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor. And the easiest way to shop for the best tickets thanks to their revolutionary grading system. House, have you gone on SeatGeek and bought baseball tickets? Dude. Yeah. Dude, I'm a master of the two taps. Okay. Well, that's too bad because you're not a first-time SeatGeek user because you're smart enough to keep using SeatGeek. But if you are a first-timer, yeah. you get $10 off baseball tickets. Use promo code BSMLB. Download the SeatGeek app today or go right to SeatGeek.com. We're also brought to you by Carvana. Browse, buy, trade in, finance your next vehicle online from the comfort of your home. House, did you know you could buy cars from your house? I, d- I did not know that. You know you could get next day delivery? Do you know you could just pick up your vehicle from the world's first coin-operated car vending machine? How is that even possible? What are you talking How many coins do you have to stick in that thing? <laughs> Wave bye-bye to buyer's remorse with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to Carvana.com slash BS, C-A-R-V-A-N-A dot com slash BS for the new way to buy a car. And we are brought to you by The Ringer NBA Show and Teed Up which is on The Ringer U, both of our podcast feeds, both of which will have more draft coverage tomorrow. Check both of those out. Next week, let's let's break a little news, House. Next week, I will be doing promos for your new podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. House has a podcast. <laughs> and, guess what it, and guess what the podcast is going to be about? Your favorite thing. People think it's basketball. Yeah, I, no, it's not basketball. It's food. Joe House. Yeah. I mean, golf. I like golf, but it's yeah, you that's do like not golf. my favorite thing. You love basketball. Yeah. You love golf. You love your family. You love a couple of your friends. And most of all, you love food and eating. And eating I really food. love food. So your new yeah. podcast that, we launch next, that we're launching next week, which I'm not going to give away the name yet, but I'm excited about the name. It is all about food. And the reason we did this is because... Uh, we argued about the Ringer's top 50 food list for 35 minutes. And honestly, it was like watching Paul Thomas Anderson put together a movie. That's That was the level of art slash genius I felt like you displayed. We all felt that way, and we were all like, let's give House a Food podcast. So get ready next week. Details to come on my Twitter feed, on the Ringer's Twitter feed, on our Facebook page, and the whole thing. Subscribe to it, and the House podcast will be launching next week. Congratulations, House. You're now you're now a double podcast host. You have Shack House, and then you also have a food podcast. You're like the, you're like a podcast host. I don't know what's going on with I'm, you. I'm humbled. I'm humbled. I'm honored, and I'm hungry. Well, uh, Pearl Jam has a song for you, so let's play that. doing draft winners and losers right now taping this it is 707 pacific time thursday night we're going to put this up as fast as we possibly can but we're going to do uh some winners and losers for the draft and so the draft it was weird it went chalk in a lot of ways uh it was also ridiculous and had some of the dumber moments we've seen in a while uh had some picks that i liked had some picks that i did not like all in all, a roller coaster ride, and it started out with a bombshell. I I have not talked to you. We've deliberately avoided each other. Minnesota and Chicago made a trade. Minnesota traded Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, the sixteenth, the seventh pick, and they got back Jimmy Butler in the sixteenth pick. Um, I'm going to give you my reaction first. I think everyone on the Bulls should be fired. Everybody, like not even people that weren't involved, people that weren't involved with the trade, all of them should they just clean house, get rid of the entire organization. I don't know how many people are working for them. The stench of this trade is going to infect the entire organization. Just start over now. Press the reset button. Just put all your jobs on ZipRecruiter because this is one of the dumbest trades I can remember. Jimmy Butler is, I don't know, somewhere between the 13th and 16th best player in the league. House, was this the poo-poo platter? It, it's, it's way worse than the poo-poo platter. I'm not sure uh, what the equivalent is. I mean, that's like going, you're in the Chinese food restaurant, you have the wonderful menu in front of you, 
there's there's a, a a whole array. There's a buffet maybe in front of you, and you say, <laughs> "Ah, I'm out. I'm gonna I'm gonna head over to. I don't want to I don't want to disrespect any restaurants, but I'm gonna head to the Sonic. I'm gonna go have a a, a super sugar icy at, at Sonic. F you, poo poo platter. Ugh. It's it's abysmal. It's astonishing. I wondered. The only thing I could come up with in trying to fathom uh, a uh, an explanation, a rationale, is that. The Bulls were insistent on getting Butler out of the East. They couldn't do any deals with any team in the East because they didn't want to see the wrath of Jimmy come back and haunt them. But um, that that's obviously a very stupid reason. Or and or they're the trying to be up with. maybe they're trying to be dicks, and they just kind of exiled him to Minnesota. They're like ah, the Minnesota's better, what? but good luck being in Minnesota. That might have been a part of it. I, I I don't know. I mean, the the uh, it's an up and coming team. It's an exciting team. He's got sure. a lot of exposure in the West. These it's are great. you know you're going to be. It's a league pass must see team now. I'm just trying. And they to, kind of already were that. I'm just trying to figure out why a team would do something this dumb. So here are my reactions in stages. So it comes out initially that it's Butler, and you could have guessed it once it was like when Chicago Minnesota's talking, and I'm thinking like. Oh, man, they're going to be able to get Jimmy Butler for Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, who has a torn ACL, and the seventh pick in a draft where everybody really likes six players, and then it kind of drops off to the next five or six. So it's not even going to be one of the six. Um, and I'm like, ah, the Celtics can't top that, really? So then the trade happens. Then it turns out um, – Chicago's also sending the 16th pick to Minnesota. I already hated the I, trade for um, Chicago. Now they're losing the 16th that's malpractice. pick. malpractice. And it's like, oh. That's malpractice. Yeah, that's, this is now really terrible. And then they're up at, at pick seven. It's like, well, at least they'll salvage this. They'll take a franchise point guard potential guy like Dennis Smith or, or Frankie Nicotine or, or my man Malik Monk, who I think is going to be uh, better than people realize. No. No. They took Lori Markkinen. They took Lori Markkinen with the seventh pick. <laughs> the, you mean the, the Finnish Andreas Bargnani? Is that who they took? They took Lori Markkinen, and Jalen's doing these player comps that I actually helped him with over the weekend. And Jalen's player comp for him was Channing Fry. And he's like, obviously he'll be a little better than Channing Fry. I'm like, I sure hope so. They gave up Jimmy Butler for him. Oh, my God. I, I, and by the way... Who says he's going to be better than Channing Frye? Yeah. I'm we, not kidding. He could be Andrea Bargnani. That's who I'm – he's the Finnish Andrea Bargnani. Yeah. The Finnish Bargs. That's what I'm calling him. So, uh, you know, you and I love judging all of these prospects, but could they have played in the finals I just watched? I, I honestly don't know how he plays in the finals I just watched. Because if he's out Ooh. there – Cleveland, let's say he's on Cleveland. Golden State's going to be like, we're running him on, on, we're running high screens with his guy until they take him out. We're just going to, these are free, been, free two points every time until he's out of the game. Are, you, are, you, are we talking about that big chicken? He, he can't be on the floor with either one of those teams. He's a, he's the 14th or 15th man on both of those teams. So He doesn't see the floor. I, I mean, I'm not saying he's horrendous. I'm just saying. No, I'm not either. It, I'm for the seventh pick in what might be the best draft in the last 20 years. I need somebody who could have played for three minutes in the finals. I, that's all I'm asking for. My, no, the the to me the reason that I'm um uh, being what sounds like hypercritical is because they got Jimmy effing Butler. They gave up yeah. Jimmy effing Butler for him. What are we talking about? Well, and it's, also he's, 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 it, and, and go ahead. I was just gonna say I'm reasonably confident that that a, tra a trade of similar value might have been there next month and two months from now and five months from now because there are lots of teams willing to give them a shitty trade for Jimmy Butler. I, Chris Dunn was horrible last year and he's 23. I, I'm not going to completely raise an write him up. He, he's 23 years old already and he was really terrible last year, like really bad, like shockingly horribly bad. And Zach Levine, who I'm... It's probably a bad sign that Timberwolves got better as soon as he got hurt. I don't know. I I don't know about what the cause and effect was, but you know he's he's a good stats bad team guy. We don't know if he can play defense. We're not sure if he can be a swingman who's on a good team. And now he has a torn ACL, 
And then they have uh, Channing Fry 2.0, and that was the entire trade. And they gave up the 16th pick. Uh, that, that's just malpractice. I'm trying to. So, but look, you did raise an interesting point. Yeah. If Jimmy Butler was available for so little, yeah. where are the Boston Celtics? I know. It hurt my where feelings. Where are the Boston Celtics? My fear, yeah. is, my fear is that they were in this Paul George trade quagmire and thinking that they just were, they put their eggs in the Paul George indie basket and then it didn't work out. And then Jimmy Butler well, just that, went sailing. So is I, Paul I, George still out there? Well, he hasn't been traded yet. Look, I'm not going to defend the Celtics because I'm officially furious that all, everybody else is making trades. But um, I do think when the cap went down, it made it almost impossible for them to be able to fit if they if they really think they're getting Gordon Hayward and indications seem to be pretty pretty positive on that front. I don't know if they could have fit Hayward and Butler in the same salary cap with Al Horford and Isaiah in a year and all this stuff. I, I, I think... Oh, it's almost like they had to pick at that point. That's the only explanation I could get for why we wouldn't want Jimmy Butler on my team house. I just want to um, convey my resentment yeah. on something you just said, which is, you know, that all indications are pointing towards the Celtics getting Hayward. I don't I don't like that kind of BS, BS. I know that you you got the insider and the insider scoop and everything, but, yeah. like, I haven't seen any stories that say that Hayward is going to Boston. Where, where, where is that coming from? What, do you think I can't have an unsubstantiated opinion with no evidence whatsoever? Why Why aren't I allowed <laughs> well, to do that? It's a podcast. That's the whole point of a I podcast. Guess it, is, it is 2017. Listen, my all my evidence goes down to the fact that Brad Stevens uh, was the first guy to recruit Gordon Hayward in high school and stuck with him. When And then when Gordon Hayward had to go, uh, the whole Mark Titus theory and the whole thing, I'm in. Well, I um I resent your entitlement. Thank you. And mainly I'm pissed because the effing Wizards can't do anything. Because I mean, you really, signed Jan Mahimni. Yeah, you signed Jan Mahimni. My team is my team is irrelevant right now, and I don't like it. Well, there was there was like 11 teams last summer who were like, "Oh, the cap's going up. Basketball's crazy. We get to spend whatever money we want." And now the cap went backwards. Oop. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey. Well, that's because the there was no playoff games. There was no David Stern to rig the play of the series. Uh, you know, Tate Frazier, who hosts Teed Up on the on the Friday, is going to be hosting it tomorrow, but uh, he's been producing my podcast since day one, and, and he watches qu- more college basketball than just about anybody I know. I'm going to give him 20 seconds here to talk about Laurie Markkinen. Maybe we're wrong. Are we wrong? I don't oh. think I don't think Laurie Markkinen's gotten a rebound in traffic his entire career. <laughs> okay. His entire life. Is that a problem? That doesn't that, sound like a positive. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Uh, I think his dad's better than he is. Uh, and that's not good either. So finish Channing Fry. Yeah. Would you? It's is it fair to say like his he's going to be better than Kelly Olynyk, right? Can we say that definitively or no? Kelly Olynyk won in Game Seven. I don't think Laurie Markkinen's winning a Game Seven. He doesn't Son have of a the bitch. He doesn't have the oh, fire. That hurts House. Yeah, I'm sorry, House. I forgot that. Yeah, House, that was too is, much. That was too much. The crowd was Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. Kelly. It was the best. Yeah, I'm sorry. S- I, didn't, I didn't want to bring SMD, that up. SMD. SMD. <laughs> so you think he might not be as good as Kelly Olynyk? I don't think he has the fire that Kelly Olynyk has. What does Titus think? Titus thinks that uh, he has a like you know what everyone upside. says he has upside. I think he has. I think he's can hit threes and you know obviously gets compared to Dirk but he just doesn't oh, he bite has, everyone needs to bite their tongue on that one how dare everyone yeah Dirk I saw that that was that was <laughs> oh ludicrous it's a lady I was outraged by no. that oh yeah. my god Dirk who Dirk Diggler does he have a long one is that what we're talking about <laughs> uh, what are we talking about well, I, get out of here by the way yeah we can't let Tate go because we have I mean the what? highs and lows of Charlotte in the last 24 hours. Oh, let's make them a we winner. Hear Yo, let's do that right now. I have winner. There's a winner and a loser. So I have two winners here. One winner, Charlotte, because they were all ready to take the white guy from Gonzaga just because MJ sees tall white guys and he just <laughs> lo- he shoots one in his pants. He can't, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he really he can't does. wait. He does it. He loves those tall white guys. And then there was a magical trade, which we'll get to in a second. 10 for 15 and 20. Anyone who's ever read me or listened to my podcast can probably guess my feelings on trading down from 10 for 15 and 20 in 10-player draft. But we're going to get to that. So they take Collins, and magically, wonderfully, my third four, third or fourth favorite player in this great draft, Malik Monk, falls to the Charlotte Hornets. Mm. Tate Frazier finally getting a break. Mm. 
It was beautiful. Finally, a fun hornet. Yeah. When was the last fun hornet? No, I mean, Lance Stevenson was the last fun hornet, and uh, that was how horrible. How sad is that? <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. They've been trying to get a shooter since 2014. They took Harrison that year, P.J. Harrison. That was a disaster. He's not even in the NBA The anymore. last fun hornet was Larry Johnson. I'm not even sure you were alive. Yeah, exactly. Now House you, yeah. and I can House you you can vouch. Larry Johnson in the on the Hornets. What about so Jamal Mashburn, Baron Davis? I, I, oh, Baron I Davis is a fun Mons. Hornet. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, Baron, Baron Davis, Davis is fun. So but wait, I want I have a question for Tate. What are you going to do the first time this the story comes out about Dwight Howard farting on Monk? I, I don't care. I don't care. Dwight Howard, I'm so happy that they have a superstar. I don't care if he's 10 years removed from being Dwight's good. Dwight's back. I'm, I'm all in. You haven't read the, the Steve Clifford's The Dwight Whisperer House. Yes. Yeah, there's all kinds of Dwight Whisperer oh. stuff. With it. So Defense first. It's a double whammy in a good way for Tate because all of us love Malik Monk. You saw Malik Monk in Vegas. Tate, who yep. hates everyone who doesn't play for North Carolina, came back raving. Yeah, 47 points. Monk. I've never seen like, anything like it. He hates all other colleges. He hates Kentucky <laughs> and was raving about Malik Monk. I said he's the number one pick, and he ended up going 11 in the Hornets. I never would have guessed that. You would have, If I had told you when you came back raving about Malik Monk, he's going to be on your team in June, you would have passed out. I would have thought it was a reverse jinx, and he was going to end up on the Celtics number three. You know, That's what so, I'd have thought. So not only does he get Malik Monk, who is going to be immensely fun, and who now I'm making him a winner as well because he dropped to 11. And he was upset about it. House, what's the history? Yeah, yeah I love it. What's the history of guys dropping four or five spots lower than they thought they were going to go? And, 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 and then maybe taking it out on some of the teams ahead of them. Oh, it's, it's storied. Running. It's a storied history, House. <laughs> storied history. And then Calipari comes on because of... <laughs> uh, I'm making them a loser, by the way. ESPN loser. John Calipari, not only did they do the two-hour infomercial for him, which made it seem like it was the greatest school ever to go to Kentucky, which I think is why he would participate in 30 for 30 because it becomes a recruiting infomercial for him. Then they put him on the draft because it's not, we haven't pushed Calipari and the whole power of Calipari when I'm done enough on, on the worldwide leader. But he mentioned how disappointed he was that the New York Knicks passed on Monk. Did you see that part? And he said, he said, uh, man, I just thought you put him in New York with that crowd or whatever he said. And, and so that means him and Monk have talked about that and they must've had a whole, Oh man, the Knicks, Oh, that would be unbelievable. And then the Knicks pass on him for some guy from France, a French guy. It's, it's definitely for the best. It's definitely for the best for Monk. I mean, the only way Monk makes sense in New York is if Phil is, is gone or dead. And I'm, and he met, I'm not a Knicks and, fan. And both so are I'm, not, I'm just rooting for him to be gone. <laughs> He's already gone and dead. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'm also Poor making fans. I'm making winner Tate Frazier because not only do you get Monk, but it paves the way for them to get rid of Kemba Walker, his mm. least favorite Hornet. Now yes. this you can't have both of those guys. Monk is it's like bringing it's small, the hot blonde yeah, for the too small, be, too small the in the back Older blonde, yeah. yeah. Get rid, trade Kemba to the Knicks. Bye Kemba. All right, um, House. Final thoughts on Malik Monk and MJ and Dwight Howard and Charlotte and the whole thing. I'm actually kind of mad because uh, Charlotte is is competition for my Washington. Oh yeah, for the Wizards. And yeah, I, and I think they're they got better. I'm afraid. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Loser. Who was the new ESPN sideline reporter? Allison Williams. Allison Williams. She interviewed Markel Fultz. Fultz, and I, I'm almost positive she called him Kyle at the end of the interview. She said, thank you, Kyle. I'm almost positive. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure. We were Twitter searching it to see if other people noticed and some other people did, but I'm pretty sure she called her Kyle. Now, I'm the loser if I'm wrong, so either I'm a loser for this or she's a loser, but I think she did call call him uh, whatever. You know, it wasn't trying to be, uh, you know, like, all right, thanks, Kel, like she was trying to do a Like Kel? Is it, do the people call yeah. him Kel? Well, maybe she was trying to start I it. don't know. Kel? All yeah, right, we'll give her. It. It. It'd be Kale. great if she just said Mark. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You know, like Magic used to call you Beal. Hey, Beal. No, he called me Beal. We had three. It was like three syllables. Beal. Uh, yeah. yeah. Winner. The Philadelphia 76ers. They have now drafted third, first, and first. They they needed. They got the guard they needed who can do everything. 
Um, I'm still a little curious why the Celtics cooled off on him. I'm gonna, I vow to get that story over the next six months, but on paper, it looks great. Everyone's excited. I'm not going to be a dick and point out that Embiid's played 31 games in three years and Ben Simmons missed all last year because I'm as excited for this as anybody if we can get these guys actually on the court to play basketball. House, I know you're excited, correct? I'm, th- I'm thrilled. The uh, stretch of like 15 games when Philly was super competitive, yeah. uh, and I don't remember who they were, they were playing against, and Embiid was at the height of his powers. It was really fun, effing fun to watch. It really was. It, it was, dare I say, must-watch TV. I felt like I was watching them over the six over the Celtics. <laughs> when, when Embiid was, was going and it was a close game, I'm like, I was just watching Embiid. I don't even care about my team. It's pretty good. Yeah, it, it was just the home games. I liked watching them at home. Hey, uh, go check out TheRinger.com today because we put a Sam Hinky video game up that uh, was drawing rave reviews. Um, it's really great. And it if you don't think he's driving an actual tank at one point, oh, you're sorely mistaken. Quick break. Do you love books but don't have time to read them? House, you love books. There's no way you read books anymore. You don't have any time, right? I don't, I don't have time for books, but well, I do love books. Well, Audible has the perfect solution. Get audiobooks. And listen at the gym during commutes, watching basketball on mute, or when, when you're driving home from dinner drunk in an Uber like you do every night. Uh, you know who uses Audible? The Simmons fam. My wife and daughter use it oh. on long commutes. They love it. And guess what? Audible just launched its first ever binge listening event. Oh. Sorry, you. when you hear the word binge, you think of eating, so I, I didn't mean to throw you off on that. But <laughs> I it's do. A, it's I a binge listening a event. If Audible launched a, a binge eating event, you would be right there. But you're invited to binge on great listens and big savings with Audible's biggest sale ever. Enjoy all the benefits of gold Audible memberships, celebrity narrated Audible books, new podcasts and audio shows, exclusive content, and more. Join now. Get a year of Audible for just $99. It's a $50 savings. Sale ends June 28th. Learn more at audible.com slash binge. Binge, binge has been big in the ringer lately because we have binge mode Game of Thrones. Mallory and Jason Concepcion are basically doing a podcast for every episode that's ever happened for Game of Thrones. And, and Mallory is starting to wear down like an actual Game of Thrones character, like Jon Snow. Like hey, she's turning into a White Walker from all the preparation and all that. So you, the least you guys can do is listen to the, the binge mode podcast. All right. Uh, another winner, LeVar Ball. You know, a little polarizing. You could see like the contempt from Wilbon when they interviewed him after the draft and my uncle Mike, I, I, I could just tell he wanted to go off, but he was reining himself in because it was, you know, this great moment for Lonzo. I'm going the other way. I like LeVar Ball. I think, <laughs> I think he's funny. I think he's, I'm he's, right there with you. He's as much of a, of a character slash parody as a lot of people in, in sports right now. Uh, I'll leave it at that. And he called this shot. He was calling Lakers from the get-go. He was like Babe Ruth in whatever World Series that was. He was telling us for months and months that Lonzo was going to play for the Lakers, and then it happened. Thumbs up. LeVar Ball, you're a winner in my mind. Yeah, he's like, a to me, an uber papa bear. He has created this cocoon for his boy to comfortably slide in, and and Lonzo doesn't have to say anything. Papa Bear's out there waving around his arms, and showing his teeth, <laughs> sticking his head inside the tent, and Lonzo's just chilling behind. I like that. I'm, yeah. I'm good with that Papa Bear role. Lonzo has the same look that I can't wait for my kids to have in about 10 years where they're just, he has that look like, hey, my dad's crazy. I mean, he's just a nut job. What do you want from me? I love him. He's my dad, but I know he's crazy. Like, just, I get it. Yeah, he, you know, it's one of those. It's like, It's really like how I've been with my mom for for the last 20 years when any any dinner with my mom <laughs> when the second bottle of wine comes i have the same look that lonzo ball has all the time uh <laughs> your mom makes great meatballs i'm not saying a bad thing about your mom. <laughs> uh i don't know if this was a winner or a loser but did you see markel Fultz's jacket did i you see only it? saw it on the twitter i only saw it on the twitter he had a very elaborately done 
all kind of, what was on that tacket, jacket, Tate? He had like all family, drawings family, of family pictures. Then yeah. He had like the Washington Husky, I think. He had like, he had every, there was everything in his life. He said it was his life story in a jacket. So I love the sentiment behind it, but why have it on the inside of the jacket? And he took it off to show it. And it was yeah. like this weird process. And then. So then it goes in your closet. It's on a coat hanger and it's closed the whole time. And you can't see anything. Make the jacket, put all the stuff on the yeah, outside. Flip it inside out. I think I'm making that a loser. I'm making the idea of the jacket a winner, but putting all the good stuff on the inside, I'm making that a loser. I didn't agree with it. Yeah. Execution loser. Winner, Tibbs. Oh, my God. Tibbs somehow got Jimmy Butler. Tibbs had the seventh pick in a, a draft that had six short things plus Malik Monk. Decided that he didn't want to take Malik Monk. Um... And just flipped everything into Jimmy Butler. And God bless him. Tibbs. So they have Towns. They have Jimmy Butler. They have Andrew Wiggins. They have Rubio. They have a couple uh, bench players that I like. I'm not ready to do the whole, you see them in the Western Finals thing, but it's a fun team. They're going to be able to play defense. If Towns can protect the rim and step it up a level and they get one more vet, I don't know. I like that team. What do you think, House? They need to play defense. Yeah. I have a, a a question for you, a winner loser question. Do you, what do you think, uh, Andrew Wiggins? Um, how he, how he fares in this? Is he a winner or a loser with Jimmy Butler coming? Oh, he's down? a winner because he Andrew Wiggins just plays two guard, and Butler plays plays the three. He's good. He well, doesn't I, I get the guard where they're, Paul where they're going to play. What? Are there are enough balls to go around? Yeah, he loses shots. Yeah, he loses shots, but I th- I'm fine with that. I I think. If you're ever going to actually win anything, Andrew Wiggins has to be the third best offensive player on your team. If he's one or two, you're not winning anything. So now Towns and Butler are the two best. And now Wiggins is an overqualified third guy, which is great. You know, He was kind of an underqualified second guy, but he's an overqualified third guy. You know? Isn't kind of, this the perfect team uh, yeah. as, as constructed for Ricky Rubio? Yeah. Ricky Rubio was good the last two months. I don't know why they keep trying to trade him. I, think, I still think... The, as amazing as this sounds, Ricky Rubio is still like 26. I think he's like three years older than Chris Dunn. But, uh, but you know, you have an overqualified third guy, Jan Mahindi. Who? And- <laughs> no, Jan oh, Mahindi. I think he's so overqualified. Rude. By the way, I haven't talked, so I haven't congratulated you on the podcast yet that your team didn't trade for Dwight Howard. Congratulations. <laughs> I, was, I tweeted how relieved I was. I was worried. You know, you caught me at a very vulnerable moment that Saturday afternoon. I was so hungover. Yeah. And you, we were talking, uh, 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 you know, we were talking NBA finals. We yeah. Had to, we had to get one together. And uh, I just let it slip that I, I was, in my head, I could imagine a world where Dwight Howard might come to Washington. And, and then, I, got, I got killed for it on the Twitter properly. And I'm glad that it didn't work out. You got killed on it because people. Because he's Dwight Howard. Oh, people were upset that you even. Dane to mention it got it yeah so yeah. loser um me and my dad right as they're picking Jason Tatum a pick that I actually liked the Celtics it was like two minutes after Woj treated that the Celtics were in serious talks for Paul George and instead of just enjoying the fact that the Celtics drafted a highly skilled offensive player who can score who is just a very good scorer who is going to end up being somewhere between Danny Granger, Paul Pierce. Like, he's in that class. I'm not going to say he's the next pee-pee. What? I can't just, say that. I just said I'm not going to say he's the next pee But he was certainly better. You just as a, used those two names. You said Granger and Pierce. Both those guys were all-stars. Yeah, I think this guy's going to be an all-star. I think he's an elite he's, he's scorer. He's better than Jaleel Okafor? You think he's better than Jaleel Okafor? How da- that's yes. just, that's that's awful. Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would you even comparable, think that? Comparable position. They both got drafted. To I urge. Same school. I mean, what do you want me to do? Go look at Paul Pierce's freshman year at Kansas and tell me how it compares to my man Tatum. I like Tatum. I would have been happy with Tatum or Jackson. I think, you know, it's funny. We get, you know, when MVP time, remember everyone's arguing about the MVP for months and months. And people were picking, you know, when the people are making the case for Harden or Westbrook, and it's basically an all offense case. And then there was that, remember there were the people picking Kawhi, like he's the best two-way player. And then there was the backlash to those people. And it's like, look, offense is more important than defense. This is an offense league now. 
I'm valuing offense more than defense. I don't care about defense as much. So then the Celtics pick somebody who's great at offense and who really has a chance to be an elite guy, um, but not as good at defense. Maybe he'll end up being passable or better than passable, whatever. Right now he's like, I think he's average. He's got big wingspan. Um, he'll be fine. He's not a liability. But Josh Jackson's a great two-way player. But the only thing is Josh Jackson can't shoot. Well, doesn't shooting matter in basketball? All we watch are people making outside shots now. I'm glad the Celtics took the offensive guy over another guy who's this great athlete who the one thing they can't do is figure out how to put the ball in the basket. What did you think? I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I, uh, I know that I'm often um, chastised for agreeing with you too much. Yes. But the Celtics at that slot, if you're going to take, if you're going to, Pick a guy and keep the three hole, then Tatum's the guy. I think that made the most sense. If we had taken Jackson, I think it, I think it might have killed my dad in like December. Just at the game, I think he just that would have been it. He would have killed over like between Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and Josh Jackson. Just none of those guys you ever think the ball is going to go in when they're shooting. Jalen sometimes. Jalen, I Jalen sometimes you can see he's getting hot. But I'm just so glad they picked somebody that. We can throw him the ball down though, and he can just do a spin move on the baseline and score, or just a quick pull up shot. Like he's got tricks already. He's 19, and he's a fantastic free throw shooter. Mm. Um, and he gets to the line and he converts, and he just knows what he's doing. He's a good kid. I like the pick. And of course, right as they pick him, there's a Paul George. Oh, house, we got a big trade. The Jazz moved up to 28 and gave the Lakers 30 and 42. Breaking, breaking <laughs> news right here. So can we can we let I want to talk about that Kings thing that made me mad. No, hold on, we're getting Speaking to it. Speaking of trading, down. I'm trying to go All in right. order. I'm trying to go in order. All right. All uh, right. Loser. Josh Jackson seems sad. I got a sad vibe from Josh Jackson. It wasn't quite a Steve Francis getting drafted by Vancouver when Steve Francis kept looking up and rolling his eyes during the interview, and it looked like he was going to start sobbing. It wasn't that bad, but I didn't feel like Josh Jackson. Um, was was ready to really tear it up in Arizona. What did you think? I, I'm surprised um, by that hey! sort of reaction. Uh, I agree. Why well, there's cheering? What's happening? Uh, Tay was excited because <laughs> Tony, Tony Bradley, North Carolina's Tony Bradley, just went to uh, Utah. Oh my God! Yeah. Hey, hey, Tate. The adults are talking right yeah, now. Yeah, Tate. Go back to the kids' <laughs> table. <laughs> uh, the uh, I. Th- I think that Phoenix is a great situation. I would like I to too. go play in Phoenix right now. It's super fun. Well, I think what happened is I think he got a whiff of New York possibilities and Porzingis and like a whole mega deal and started to think about the Knicks. And that could be my only explanation. I'm with you. If, I, if I'm Josh Jackson, good fan base, nice young team, uh, a crunch time dude in Devin Booker who's going to be special. He can go do Josh Jackson things. And I, w- I was talking to one of my basketball friends to- today. If Dominique is a 10 out of 10 on the in-game dunker scale, and James Worthy and James Worthy is an eight, eight and a half. Yeah. Josh Jackson might be. I might put him a smidge over James Worthy. He might be a not. He might end up being a nine out of 10 on the in-game dunking on people scale. I think he's going to dunk on lots of people. And. Wow! If he's doing that and playing defense, and Devin Booker's taking all the shots, that's fun. He should. I hope he's happy to go there because I think that's the right team for him. I'm not sure Boston would have been the right team for him. Winner, uh, Boston would have been a terrible for him. Well, Sorry. also because they had a lot of swing guys too. You know, I, I'm not sure in Phoenix yeah. he'll play. He'll just get minutes. Uh, he's right. a fascinating prospect. I did a lot of research on him because it seemed like the Celts might take him at one point, and um. Just seems like an an alpha dog by all accounts. Just an alpha dog, just competitive as hell. Just wants to win and everything. Goes full tilt all the time. Tate hates Kansas more than he hates cancer, and even Tate kind of respected Josh Jackson. I I don't hate Kansas more than cancer. <laughs> all right, he hates cancer the most, but Kansas is a close second. But you. You respected Josh Jackson. Yes, incredible. Spin yeah. moves, dunks, left hand, right hand, around the basket, anything you want. That's how you know this was a good draft because Tate actually likes some of the players and they played for <laughs> schools that he detests with every fiber of his body. Who who took Swanigan? 
Swanigan. Swanigan. No, Trailblazers. Swanigan. Swanigan. Yeah. Swanigan. 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 Who took Swanigan? Trailblazers. Stasis. Noah Vonley. Goodbye. Wow. Trailblazers. Yeah. Good fit. Titus loved him. He's the best. Yeah. Almost broke David Robinson's double double record. Throw throw him the ball and he'll do some low po- old school low post game. De'Aaron Fox is a winner. And and not just because he gets to run his own team in Sacramento, and I think he would have been happy everywhere he goes, but he was just a big personality winner of this draft, right? It it just seems like the greatest guy. Fantastic interview, great, great charisma, great energy, great just a happy, competitive guy. And like they asked him about, hey, you played better than Lonzo before the draft. Hey, you you really outplayed Lonzo in the tournament and he's probably going to go ahead of, ahead of you. How does that make you feel? And he's like, doesn't matter, man. We, we all have our NBA team and I'll see him during the season. Like, But you could tell it bothered him. I love Darren Fox. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's going to be, uh, I think, he, you know, he reminds me of your dude, John Wall. How about that? Definitely speed wise. I, I love Fox also. He's got a nice um, leadership quality to him. That's what yeah. I think. And, you know, especially Sacramento could use a guy who touches the ball, uh, you know, has the ball in his hands all the time with a little bit of a leadership instinct. That would be nice for, for a change in Sacramento. And it's hard to, I think about that tournament and one of the enduring images is him and Monk crying after the game in the locker room. And, and Fox was so upset when they lost. Like that's, it's my daughter's soccer coach said this to me once. He was always like, look who's crying after the game. Those are the kids that are going to make it. I thought that was a good way to put it. If you're crying after the game, that means you gave a shit, which means you probably gave a shit during the game, you know? And when it matters that much, you, that's how you're going to live your professional career. And he just strikes me as one of those guys. That guy's just going to, he wants to be great. I don't know if he's going to be great, but he's going to kill himself trying. Perfect pick for the Kings. Unfortunately, they're also the losers. Now we get to talk about it, House. Actually, good. Let's uh, let's let's give this a let's give this a sponsor. Let's give this let's uh let's bring in Stamps.com because the Kings put their stamp on yet another terrible Kings trade. They traded ten for fifteen and twenty, but Stamps.com convenient, easy, reliable, flexible. My favorite words to describe Stamps.com. House, you don't go to the post office, right? No, no, no. Stamps.com, winners and losers. Stamps.com, winner. Stamps.com, winner. Avoid the post office. Buy and print official U.S. postage with your own computer and printer. You don't, you don't have to uh, wait in line. Just hand your packages to your own mailman right outside your house. Do you have a mailman? Do they have mailman in D.C. house? They do. They do. A guy comes right in the building. I like to give him my packages. Yeah? Okay. Well, sign up with Stamps.com. Yeah. Any letter. Any package, any class of mail, you're in control of all of it. Stamps.com will send you a digital scale that automatically calculates exact postage and helps you decide the best class of mail. And right now, use my code BS for the special offer of a four-week trial plus postage plus a digital scale without long-term commitments. And if you use code BS, you also are allowed to trade down from 10 in a 10-player draft for 15 and 20. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in BS. Do not type in, that was a terrible Kings trade. Type in BS, that's stamps.com, enter BS, sign, ups today. sign up today, stamps.com, never go to the post office again. Um, just take Malik Mock at 10. Just take him. Don't overthink it. This isn't football. You're not trading from 20 to 30. You're picking up 32 and 68. Like This is a 10-player draft. You trade down if you're the Celtics and you feel like there are four great players and you don't care which player you get and you get to pick up an extra asset. This is different. They traded down. They took Tate's dude, Justin Jackson, who I'm not sure is ever a starter. And then they took Harry Giles, who's had two major knee surgeries already and is a huge injury risk. How about this? Just take Malik Monk, who's going to be, worst case scenario, he's better than, he's a better Lou Williams. Worst case scenario. Right. And, and, and the guys get to play together. And they I get mean, to play together. They're the boys. Point, take the, take the, the Kentucky is, boys. <laughs> Take the Kentucky boys. The uh, point is to put a product on the floor that your fans can get behind. How about how, what's more exciting than those two guys from Kentucky? They were by far, without a doubt, incomparable in college basketball. They, they were, were the so much to fun watch to watch basketball this season. Uh, right. Hey you, know, hey, you know what else is a good idea? To take two lottery picks 
in the most loaded draft in 20 years from the college that just delivers stars in the lottery year after year after year after year. All Kentucky does is deliver stars to the NBA. And you could have had the two guys that love playing together, and that could have been your backcourt with Buddy Hill. They could have had Fox, Monk, and, and Buddy. They could have, that, how, much, how much fun is that? I love that team. I would have... But on the other hand, as a Celtics fan, I'm happy the Kings went Kings on us again because we have their unprotected pick probably in 2019. You know what I would have loved for them to do? Trade out of that spot and pick Justin Jackson and Harry Giles. So thanks, Kings. Winner, Celtic fans. <laughs> Why not just take Fox and Monk? Tate. Yes. If you had to bet your life on like you're betting your life on the draft. I uh-huh. always do this. You're yeah. betting your life on this. Yes. This is a life wager. My life has been on the line a lot. This you're week. like, you know, <laughs> you're being dangled from a skyscraper by terrorists. And they're like, this has to work out or yeah. we're dropping you. Uh-huh. Tenth pick. You already have De'Aaron Fox on your team. Now you have to take another player or you could trade down mm-hmm. and take two flyers on two guys that aren't in the top 10. Yes. Or you could just take the guy Malik Monk who scored 47 points in a college game and made a bunch of big shots and has a chance to be one of the best heat check and guys. And already has a year under his belt playing with the point guard he just drafted, right? Yeah. And has 25 foot range in a sport that has just drifted to threes Yeah, and has a chance to win like five three point contests and the whole thing. What would you do? Just draft him. You draft Take Monk. the best player available. They, I think they over... They they wanted Giles, but they don't want to take him that early. And they're like, oh, we got Harry Giles. He was the best player in high school three years ago. Yeah, and then he tore his ACL twice. I'm rooting for Harry Giles. I mean, the thing. I, yeah, same. Of course, of course. The thing that's confounding is, like, this is a simple math problem. I mean, I don't. I know that uh, our, your boy Daryl Morey has a yeah. value, and and by now it's it's. I think everybody is plugged into this. You know what level of success to expect out of the 15 hole and the 20 hole. Yeah. And it's nowhere near. It doesn't even approximate within, you know, three orders of magnitude uh, what, what you can get out of the 10 hole. So I just don't get it. Every draft drops, which is why I like 98, which was one of the, the probably my favorite draft just from a pure excitement standpoint. When the Celtics had the 10th pick and it felt like it was an eight player draft. And we needed two two teams to screw up, and then tractor trailer and white chocolate went for ahead of when they should have gone, and all of a sudden we're heading into the ninth pick, and Dirk Nowitzki and Paul Pierce are still in the table, and we're just over the moon. It's like this shouldn't happen with the tenth pick in an eight player draft. Next pick was Bonzi Wells, Mike Doliak. All it just drops. Every draft drops off. This draft dropped off at number eleven after Malik Monk got picked. And then you're now you're in the Luke Kennard, all these guys. I, don't, I mean, maybe Luke Kennard will be good. Mm-mm. <laughs> Tate says, Mm-mm. Uh, you have the Luke Kennard, Donovan Mitchell. All of a sudden, we're in the combo guard section of our draft. They're combo guards. <laughs> they play both guard spots. Combo guards. Randy Foy, combo guard. Grievous Vasquez, combo guard. <laughs> they can play either spot. Well, do they play either of them well? No, they can play either spot. I actually do like Mitchell. I don't want to down Mitchell. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do, House. We've been watching the draft forever. Sometimes you just know when somebody's making a mistake and when you have the 10th pick and you can put Monk and Fox together. I feel bad for Riley McAtee, who is, works for the Ringer, diehard Kings fan. And what's the syndrome you have when you start to identify with your hostages? Stockholm. Stockholm syndrome. I was going to say Munchausen syndrome, but that's that's way worse. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. That's a different one. Riley has NBA Stockholm syndrome. He's He was like excited. Yeah, he thought Justin. He, He's yeah. like, oh, we got Justin Jackson. And Harry Giles is a good flyer. It's like, yeah, but you could add Malik Monk. I haven't seen him yet, but I'm going to try not to be mean. Riley's sensitive. He's had a lot of kicks paid. You know who you could have had? De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk. You could have had them in the same team. Mm-hmm. Remember the team that was so much fun in college? You could have replicated that for the next 15 years, but you didn't. Uh, all right. Uh, loser. MSG. Ooh. I want to see Malik Monk at MSG. Yeah. All of us wanted it. I thought this was going to be the, the Steph Curry makeup draft. Same spot. Instead of Steph Curry going right ahead of them. This time Monk falls to them. But they took Frankie Nicotine. And he might be really good. I, I got to be honest. I, my weak spot with these drafts are always like 
high school players. They didn't have those anymore. But anytime I've been really wrong, it's always been, for the most part, high school players and, and foreign guys. And who knows? I just know that. Do you think uh, there's... I, I know that Malik Monk is good. I'm positive. Do you think that the, the choice of Frankie Nicotine over Monk, I, I, I pray this was not the case, but I wondered it when they, when they made the, the selection, if they imagined that Nicotine is going to be better in the triangle than, than Monk. Sure. And that was the coachable. reason for, for choosing him. He's a coachable French guy. Yeah. What'd you think of, uh, I don't, I'm going to let you decide winner or loser, Dennis Smith to the Mavericks. Um, I really like Dennis Smith, and I think the Mavericks uh, organizationally are, you know, top tier, like top five franchises in the NBA. And I think Dennis Smith is going to get like every chance to to learn. I mean, the car- combination of Cubes and Carlisle is going to have every resource to flourish. So I'm calling it a winner. Mm. I he's one of those guys that it, it really depended on the team. It's kind of like Tate coming out of college, really dependent on where he landed, where his career could have gone either way. Like he's, he has a head case. He's uncoachable. No, that's, uh, but Dennis Smith, that was the rap on him, right? A little uncoachable. Yeah, but he knows Harrison, so that's good. He's got Yogi Ferrell there. Carlisle will be good with him. I think it's a good Well, fit. so that's what I worry about because Carlisle's a curmudgeon. Yeah, they were like, "Oh, Rondo and Carlisle, they're both so smart, they'll get along." And then Rondo and Carlisle are throwing chainsaws at each other. But Dennis like thinks Mark Mark Godfrey's a good coach and he can learn from him. So if he thinks Mark Godfrey mm. can teach him about basketball, then Rick Carlisle definitely can. What's it like to go from Mark Godfrey to Rick Carlisle? It's got to be like going from a high school coach to Greg Popovich. I mean, that's just a huge jump. It's like going from Justin Jackson and Harry Giles to Malik Monk. <laughs> that's what that's what they're saying. It's that kind of leap. Uh, loser Rick Carlisle because if he can't get it going with Dennis Smith he mm. might be too much of a curmudgeon yeah I was kind of deep down hoping marketing was going to fall to nine and then I would have been all the way in on marketing be like oh Dirk Dirk gets to raise the next <laughs> Dirk but that didn't happen I'm I Dallas having Dennis Smith is I they really haven't had a guy like that ever I'm trying to remember like a point guard or just just kind of a high ceiling, low basement, great athlete. I I, I don't think they've had a guy like that. Josh Howard. Yeah, but Josh Howard was like four year college. Yeah, I guess that's different. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be fun. So House, you're in on that pick. I think House is asleep. Yeah, I like House it. is doing prep. <laughs> I don't prep think... work for his food podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I I am thinking about dessert. I I I. Trying to think of the last time I was pondering, which is part of why I was quiet. The last time Dallas took a freshman. Has Dallas taken a freshman? Well, they usually don't have a pick. Mm. Right. And they never and they usually if they do have a pick, they usually don't make the pick correctly. Which leads to stuff like three years of everyone telling us how great Roddy Boubois was gonna be and how he was t- untradeable and all that stuff. So that this guy actually might be um usually they've had more success late. With like second round or stuff like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, I'm giving myself a winner because I noticed that Zach Collins, <laughs> Zach Collins and Anna Kendrick kind of look alike. I'm just throwing that out there. If you split screen them, if you split hey, screen them, internet. Zach Collins, Anna Kendrick, like like brother and sister. So I'm a winner because I noticed that. Uh, two, oh, sorry. two more winners. The most loaded draft in 20 years. And these two guys were used in Jalen's player comps, Channing Fry and George Hill in the top eight. <laughs> George Hill was compared to uh, Frankie Nicotine. Is that a compliment? I it's I mean they had to have been delighted, right? They're just watching the draft, and George Hill's watching. It's the eighth pick, and he gets compared to the eighth pick. That's, oh, George, yeah, yeah, George. It's it's thrilling to George. Sure, I was thinking about it from Frankie's point of view. How so? You drinking? <laughs> It's not, not slur his words. Remember, it's, it's almost 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Oh, that's true. So you're punchy. You're a little punchy right now. I am. Yeah, I was excited. Yeah. The The best draft in 20 years, and Channing Fry and George Hill were the comps for the seventh and eighth pick. So the Lakers took Josh Hart from Villanova. Yep. The Cubs and I, we hit every one of our props. Yeah. Kentucky had three that guys. Was the, that's my... I'm giving me a loser. I did not get in on any one of those props. They were all great props too. We had Jason. We had uh, Jason Tatum going before the fifth pick, and mm-hmm. Fox going after the fifth pick. Parlayed with Kentucky. That was my big. 
That was my big one. Yeah, I just bet on two Carolina What odds guys did you get for that? Week. What what odds did you get for that one? It was, it was like at least four to one. Against all Son odds with Cousin Al. And guess what else I did on Cousin Sal's podcast? We went to the Make Believe Casino. Did, oh, did you get to do that with him? You play? Did you get to do that with no. him? No. Yeah, we went to the Make no, Believe Casino. I was too casino. busy giving out golf winners. I, I was giving out golf winners. Yeah. I was busy. He praised you. Uh, what happens at the at the Make Believe Casino? He made some Make Believe props, and I had to pick them because that's what you do at the uh, at the at the Captain oh. Morgan's Make Believe Casino. Captain Morgan likes Make Believe bets. So, um, winner Malik Monk, we covered that. Loser. Stan Van Gundy, mm. 12th pick, Luke Kennard. I, I just I just wanted them to take, like, either trade the pick or take somebody who at least has, like, a, a shitload of upside that you could get excited about. They took, like, just another guy who's going to be a solid player. They have a team of guys ranging from solid to solid. And I just, if I'm a Pistons fan, what am I looking at? My cap space is tied up. Yes, yeah, KCP's Drummond's, replacement. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now I'm losing KCP, mm-hmm. who I, I don't. I think I'm fine with that actually. Yeah, I think so. Andre Drummond's my franchise center, who I can't play in the last four minutes of games. Um, I've overpaid Reggie Jackson. I think the Pistons are in the conversation for top four fan bases you wouldn't want to be a part of, right? Just with the teams. The Pistons stink. Mm. Very happy for the Pistons to stink. The internet loved the Pistons. Remember last year, right before oh my we were God. doing our over unders? Yeah. The 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 enthusiasm for the Pistons. They were they're coming up. They got the that Reggie Jackson uh, drum and pick and roll with SVG. <laughs> he had this with with uh, yeah. Dwight Howard and and Jameer Nelson. Oh, we're gonna see it all over again. They sucked. They <laughs> sucked all season. Good riddance. Good riddance. Pistons. Enjoy another <laughs> shitty thirty eight win season. Uh, Stan Van oh. Gundy. Uh, Tate's upset because Frank Jackson just got picked by the Hornets. They took a Duke guy. Uh, we lost Tate. Now nobody's going to be able to put the po- podcast up. Tate's Tate's breaking. He stuff. lost and he won and he lost. You have Look a Duke guy. Tate's what? got a Duke guy in the Hornets. My least favorite guy. Oh, uh, he his has least Dwight favorite Howard guy and too. a Duke guy. Why don't you like him, Tate? Hey, What's wrong with him? He's, he's going to slap the floor so much in the NBA. Oh, he's a floor slapper. They took a floor <laughs> slapper from Duke. That is hilarious. Uh, yeah, Detroit. It's funny because the media loves certain guys, and it's usually the guys that know how to butter up the media it, by no coincidence. But like you could see it when David Griffin, when he had the uh, him and Dan Gilbert decided to break up, and uh, it was it was just funny watching all the media people just lose their minds that they oh my god David Griffin, he built the Cavs. You know who built the Cavs? LeBron James. That's who built the Cavs. They had. Are we gonna do ten seconds on that? Uh. Yeah, but first, uh, let's talk about Hotel Tonight. Have you okay. have you downloaded the Hotel Tonight app yet? Cause no, you, no. You I'm go to all these different Hotel places Tonight. on short notice. Hotel I Tonight's do. perfect for you. That's true. Uh, all right. For people not so great at planning ahead or people who are traveling short ding. notice, ding and ding for Joe ding. House. Uh, an yeah. awesome app, Hotel Tonight, helps you find amazing hotel deals at the last minute, unlike flights. Hotel rooms usually get cheaper at the last minute. Hotel Tonight helps hotels sell their unsold rooms and allow them to pass those deals along to you. Cool, top-rated hotels, over 15,000 awesome partner hotels in 36 countries. Perfect for a spontaneous getaway, a staycation that you wanted a while, or in House's case, uh, a random business trip that you didn't expect. Check out the app, just put in the city, you can put in the location, Recently, I, I was looking at a New York City trip. I was putting in all these different New York City locations. It was fun. I was like, oh, Wall Street. Ah, oh, Soho. Uh, it, it, all these hotels pop up. Good deals. Um, five star? You get five star on, out you of You get the, a lot uh, of good stuff. And they'll throw like the suites at you, too. They'll be like, oh, the penthouse suites wow. available tonight. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I, I need five star. The five star has the best lotions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do we? Uh, 
what you get when you do a podcast with me at 11 o'clock. I can't help it. Uh, all right. Well, the app's name is Hotel Tonight. You can book up to a week in advance. All it takes is 10 seconds, three taps, and a swipe. Uh, get in on these killer last minute deals and download the Hotel Tonight app right now. It is a great app. I'm just I'm laughing because House is a degenerate and uh and, and has to be edited every once in a while. I, how are you having two podcasts? I, you, now you have two different podcasts you can get fired from. Um, winner, Greenwich Country Day. Why is that? Who's from that? Who's from that joint? Donovan Mitchell, thirteenth pick in the draft, right. Greenwich Country Day graduate. Where I was the captain of the basketball team in 1984. Um, oh, not only got drafted, gave Greenwich Country Day a shout out. Yeah, that was nice. Shout out on the air, Greenwich Country Day, unbelievable. Let's just say he was more athletic in the ninth grade than I was. Um, another winner, homeschooling. Josh Jackson homeschooled from the fourth grade on. Yeah, or Justin Jackson, sorry. Yep. Homeschooled to the fourth grade on. Tate, thoughts on homeschooled Josh Jackson? I, J- Justin Jackson. That was my biggest knock when he committed to Carolina. I was like, I don't want this homeschooled kid. But then I found out that he played his team like a, a team that it was like they were all homeschooled. So, Oh, he was on like with the other homeschool people? Yeah, and they would play other homeschooled kids in other normal schools. So like he had like friends. So it wasn't like he was at home by himself shooting basketball. It seems like homeschooled. There are more and more homeschooled kids now. When I was, yeah. when I was in high school and somebody was homeschooled, we thought something was wrong with them. But Same. now... No, I was yeah. Oh well, you're you're way younger than I am. All right, so people still feel that way. Yeah, when he committed, I was like, I don't want this kid. You know, are we gonna get angry emails? Well, I think homeschool's gotten a lot better. They figured that out. They figured okay. out the social aspect. We're not we're not homeschool shaming, are we? <laughs> yeah, no, we're not. Uh, okay. Have thoughts on homeschooling? <laughs> Why? Well, I, I mean, I think the internet. Well, you know, you can you can have an adequate curriculum. Yeah, first curriculum. With YouTube, I mean, what's the difference? You okay. can't keep putting detention for giving your teacher the finger. I mean, that's that's one thing that doesn't happen anymore. Well, winner, J- winner, Justin Jackson, homeschooled to the 15th pick. I wonder if that's the highest homeschool anyone's gone in the draft. Yeah, I mean, like Derrick Rose didn't go to school, so I guess he'd be homeschooled. Yeah, technically Derrick Rose was homeschooled. <laughs> Now the Chicago friends were, no, no, he went to Simeon High. He, uh, he kind of graduated. Um, winner Sixers versus LeVar Ball the Sixers came at him and made some jokes did you see that house Joel Embiid is one hell of a ringleader I mean he's the best I just he really we we need him to be healthy we need him for all 82 games all 82 games on social media I mean the the, the dude is a is a is a lifesaver <laughs> uh, it's 802 Pacific time I have the following yeah. offer for Joel Embiid. We would love to give you a podcast at The Ringer. You wow. can have as many of your friends as you want. Um, we'll set it up. We'll produce it for you. We love Joel Embiid. We want to be in the Joel Embiid business. He is easily um, our favorite athlete at The Ringer. Best sense of humor. Best social media account. We just love Joel Embiid. Yeah. So, yeah. if you, if Joel, if you're listening you want a podcast... Get a hold of us. We would love to. We would love to call it whatever you want. What would be a good name for the Joel Embiid podcast? I know. Other than what, the Joel Embiid show. Yeah, it's got to be. I mean, something process related. But then you know, oh, what, that's right. Wesley might be mad if we take still processing. Maybe it'd be processed. Yeah. Well, still process, Joel. Think about it, Joel. Um, winner Harry Giles, twentieth pick. Two catastrophic knee injuries and scored four points a game last year. Yeah. And now, and now he's the 20th the pick. It's pretty good, right, House? Makes him a millionaire, right? I'm not sure what the slot is, but um, good for him. Do you have any other winners and losers? Because I want to move ahead to my biggest loser of, of the week. No, no. I'm, I'm ready to talk uh, bigger losers. Who do you think is the biggest loser of the week? There's only one answer. I hope you get it right. Who do I think is the biggest loser of the week? Biggest loser of the week. Besides the, besides the Bulls. Besides the Bulls, the but even the Bulls and all their loserdom, 
could not top this loser of the week. Dan Gilbert is my loser of the week. Oh, wow. Why? Let's hear it. Because he single-handedly created a dynamic whereby his team is immediately in flux and <laughs> the sustained run of making to the finals is, a, is called into question. And he's undermined the single most important player in the league. So that, to me, makes him a pretty big loser. All fair. Phil Jackson was not just the loser of the week. He lost the year, I think. I think he lost the entire year of 2017 already. See, I, I, he's not the loser of the week to me because he's he's been such an incomparable loser for, you know, years years going on now. Fair point. He's 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 soiling his legacy. You know, the real winner, by the way, the biggest winner of the week, is Jeannie Buss because not only did she break up with the biggest loser, Phil Jackson, and thereby crush the hopes of of of, of all Knicks fans for as long as that dude is either there or alive but she also stole the lakers back from her loser brothers she changed the fortunes of two of the the two two of the like five most important franchises in the league genie bus humongous winner and got rob palenka and magic to run the team yeah huge winner although i didn't love the d'angelo russell trade what'd you think of that one it was the price that she had to pay to get you know, Lonzo have a shot and, at, yeah, at Paul yeah. George. Right. Right. I mean, so I, I love Russell. I think he's terrific. And that was a the first good Nets move in how many years now? Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Huh? Hmm. Uh, when they drafted Brooke Lopez? Probably when they drafted Brooke, Brooke Lopez. That was a good draft pick. I remember, uh, Charlotte took DJ Augustine. Is that am I remembering that correctly? Yeah. Over Brooke Lopez. Yeah, that was terrible at the time. Uh-huh. A lot of almost every time with the draft, when something feels and seems and appears to be terrible at the time, mm-hmm. it ends up being terrible. Yeah, like, like Adam Morrison, number three. Yeah, when Minnesota took the two point guards ahead of Steph Curry, yeah, and Johnny I was doing Flynn, my running diary. Yeah, and Ricky Rubio. It was horrible at the time, and I wrote about how horrible it was when. Hashim Thabit went second. To the Grizzlies, yeah. That was horrible in the moment. <clears throat> Sometimes you just kind of know. All right, uh, Phil Jackson. So it's really incredible because he's ruined Carmelo's trade value. <laughs> he's just demolished it to the point that now there's rumors that they might just buy him out. Like that, they, He's so untradeable and teams are so unconvinced you know, any of the teams, he has the no trade clause on top of everything else. But um, anybody that might even want to trade for him, they don't want any part of him. They don't want to give up assets for him because they feel now like he's going to get bought out. I I can't really remember in this century, because it happened a lot in the 70s, 80s, and 90s when we were growing up. I can't remember in this century somebody just willingly ruining the trade value of somebody as good as Carmelo. Can you have that's that's just like one example. The the gross incompetence of this dude. So the thing that's that's truly stunning to me is he was at the highest of highs. He had an in, unparalleled legacy. Yeah. You know, you begrudgingly had to include him in your in the discussion along with Red of yeah. the all-time greatest basketball minds in the history of this league. And he through whatever combination of mental infirmity uh, delusion, um, narcissism. I don't know what the, the psychological cocktail is or was. That mother effer is off his ass and he's crushed his legacy. It makes you question everything about uh, that, that preceded the last five years. He has, he's ruined this. Fr- he's been way, way, way worse than Isaiah Thomas ever was. He's, he's been disgraceful in the way, in every uh, decision he's made, the process that he's used for the decision, the, his approach to the game, his understanding of the game. It's been one humongous shit sandwich, and I love it because I hate the Knicks. So, SMD, Knicks fans. See, I, I was going to cut in there. There was a couple spots, and I was going to say, but enough about Trump. How do you feel about <laughs> Phil Jackson? 
but then you ended up with the Knicks <laughs> fan, so I couldn't do it. Uh, um, it's it's incredible. Poor Zingas. Ask yourself this. How many people could protect the rim in a finals game while also making 40 to 45% of their threes? Conceivably. Just hypothetically on paper, how many human beings fit that bill? Two it's, of- it's Porzingis and Lowry Markin, and that's the only two I can come up with. <laughs> uh, the correct answer, two of the players are in Golden State, Durant and, and Draymond. Porzingis. And eventually, Anthony Davis, once he starts making threes, he hasn't really made them consistently yet. And eventually, Giannis, when Giannis takes over the league and becomes rim-protecting, three-point shooting guy who dunks from half court. That's yeah. the entire list. You can't trade that guy. I don't care if he's strained his Achilles. You put him in a terrible position. He, he was playing with no point guards ever, and then when you finally got him a point guard, it's Derrick Rose, who's a fucking ball hog. Um, and then Carmelo's a ball-stopping ball hog. I watched the Knicks. I, I know. I didn't watch as much Knicks as somebody like Jason Concepcion, but... I watched when Porzingis was hot in the fourth quarter and Melo and Rose would just freeze him out. They wouldn't give him the ball. He's like, like he's like fire shooting out of his ass and he's just standing in the corner. They're ignoring him. It, it would be an incredible mistake to trade him. And I'm, I'm saying that as somebody who has a, my favorite team has a chance to get him. And I'd actually feel bad because you just shouldn't trade somebody like that. It's, it's a farce. It's terrible. He should. It's terrible. It's, there's nothing worse, yeah. as you know, as a Washington Redskins fan. Um, there's nothing worse than when somebody completely incompetent is in charge of your team. I mean, there's a lot of things yeah. worse, I actually. Wanna... There's, te- there's life things worse, I'm saying, as a sports fan. The worst is when you have somebody terrible in charge of your team and you can't do anything about it. And that's where the Knicks have been, really, for 20 years. It's very unfair. I have two very quick things to say. Shout out to Mike Lombardi, his column about the L.A. Rams, very timely on this point. Yeah. And I felt like um, you could easily control uh, and, you know, find and replace Rams and with Deadskins. And you could write the exact same article in, in about the Dan Snyder and the Deadskins. But the other uh, thing, I just want to um, apologize to the Knicks fans. I don't really hate the Knicks fans. They didn't really they don't really deserve the sustained run of of just, you know, in in inedible shit sandwich that they've been served up but that's what happens with with these legacy you know kid owners no you you that was more of a new york based rant which is why i let it go yeah you're where you're from washington you're conditioned to hate new york i'm from boston i'm conditioned to hate new york i feel bad for the knicks fans this is like Me too first of all msg is probably my favorite non-boston place to watch a basketball game or even watch it on tv sensational that's why tonight hurt i i really man if if oh the magic just got ivan rob poor ivan rob tate yeah could have gone like 16th last year now he went 35th well jalen tried to get him to come out with him yeah he was like come out with me and he Uh, didn't now he's that's a good pick at 35 the magic maybe the magic know what they're doing oh it says no he's going to memphis I was going to Memphis. Memphis. That makes sense. That's the Zach Randolph replacement, right? Oh, man. Right? Yeah. That's a classic Grizzlies pick. Good He's pick. Good. <laughs> I like that pick. Verno. Verno's probably. Let's see what Verno has to say. On oh, Verno <laughs> loves that one. <laughs> I love Ivan Rob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anything else, House? I, it's time for me to go to bed. Okay. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Carvana. They unsuck the experience of going to the dealership. Browse, buy, trade in, finance your next vehicle online from the comfort of your home. Choose as soon as next day delivery or pick up your vehicle from the world's first coin-operated car vending machine. House, go see the car, the coin-operated car vending machine and report back. Wave bye-bye. I'm going to take a picture. Wave bye-bye to buyer's remorse with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to carvana.com slash BS, C-A-R-V-A-N-A.com for the new way to buy a car carvana.com slash bs thanks to stamps.com buy and print official u.s postage for any letter any package any class of mail using your own computer and printer they'll send you a digital scale automatically calculate exact postage don't go to the post office sign up for stamps.com use promo code bs 
for a four week trial plus postage plus a digital scale plus the 15th and 20th picks in the draft with no long term commitments. Click on the microphone at the top of the stamps.com homepage. Type in BS. We did four podcasts this week. Um, House, I also banked two podcasts with two celebrity guests. I did six podcasts in four days. I think that might be oh, a new look record. At you go. Yeah, might be a new record. But uh, I mean, you are the pod father. I, I, listen, the pod father's got to protect his corner every once in a while. But uh, that's, that's it. Really that's good right. week of podcasts. Don't sleep, but. On the uh, the NBA stuff, I'm I'm sure is probably not going to age that well this week, other than this one. But the Malcolm Gladwell podcast had a lot of good stuff in there, so if you missed that one, go back and uh, and listen to that one. And don't forget to listen to you. Yeah, he talked bad about golf. I'm gonna have to. I'm calling him out on this week's Shack House. Yeah, Sorry. you're gonna go, Sorry, Malcolm. You're gonna uh, respectfully disagree with his country club thoughts That's right. on the next shack house you're right about that and then next That's week that. house's new food podcast we buried the lead yeah daddy food podcast Would please you- come hungry please come hungry that's not the name of it i'm just inviting everybody all listeners arrive <laughs> hungry for this podcast i promise we're going to deliver the goods house i have some bad news we um uh-oh we traded down with your food podcast. We're not going to do it. Instead, we're going to do a milkshake podcast and a French fry podcast. We the the uh, the the Trailblazers offered us two worst podcasts for it, so we're going to do that. Instead. That makes sense. You know, you the the millennials that work for you all all they do is talk you into these these bad outcomes. You know, the first thing I'm going to do is go on the very first podcast is going to be about millennial food. Oh, you what should the, do that. I, well, I don't. Oh, I believe me. You you don't think I'm telling the truth? The hashtag when I woke up this morning was hashtag millennial food. I don't even know what that is. What is millennial food, Tate? I don't know. Tate, I don't, are you a millennial? I, I don't identify with them, no. No. Yeah, Tate's Tate's <laughs> no. from Tate's from the South. He doesn't deal with those people. We're just yeah. ha- we're just Tate, happy Tate to make his, it out. He knows He knows where his Bojangles is at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> millennial food. Maybe that's the first topic on your podcast. It is. I, I assure you. I am not the guest on the first house food podcast, but I, I'm definitely coming on the second one because we have to argue about a bunch of different things. I'm very excited about this. Yeah. Um, house, thanks for staying up late for us. Thanks so much to everybody at The Ringer. Check out all the great videos and all the great draft stuff that we put up yesterday. And then uh, and Friday, we have a whole bunch of draft grades. Jonathan Charks was grading stuff as we did the draft. Chris and Kevin O'Connor. Chris Ryan and Kevin O'Connor did a bunch of videos. We have some big pieces coming tomorrow. And uh, and we are ending this at eight fifteen on Thursday night West Coast time. Oh, oh, well, wait a second! The Celtics are coming up. House, let's stay one more minute for the house for the Celtics pick. Can we do that? Yeah, I promise not to snore. The Celtics, t- uh, the Seventy Sixers took Jonah Bolden. Jonathan Charks loves this guy out of yeah, Australia. Charks did love this guy. Yeah, big fan. Said he's a lot of upside. Said Jonah Bolden. He told me Jonah Bolden was just as good as Tony Bradley, which I scoffed at the thought now the celtics are up who's what good guy are there any ivan rab guys left any good ones i saw frank mason got taken what, what about pj dozier how do you feel about pj dozier i don't like initial names jason hart jason, jason hart's hart gone hasn't been picked yet. who josh hart oh uh, yes yeah he got drafted josh 30th hart. Yeah. jason hart got drafted lakers. eight years ago oh, yeah lakers got him <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get 11 15 that's what you get out of me house did you know my dad watched all six seasons of game of thrones in two weeks that's pretty incredible. Did he stay awake for for all of them? Yeah, they have a puppy. They got this puppy, and he's got to stay uh, downstairs with the puppy. And he just started watching it on the iPad, and he was banging out like four a day. That's outstanding. That's a great way to watch it. It makes it start. They start to feel like movies because each episode is it has that epic vibe to it. He had some great comments. I, I'm actually going to have him on the pod to discuss some of his uh, some of his thoughts. He had some hot takes. Well. Yeah, I'd like to hear how, what he thought about Khaleesi in season in her first season. So one of the things he did say was, "Boy, there's a lot of nudity on this show." <laughs> and then he goes, "And the women have answer. great bodies." That was another take from my retired father, Doc. <laughs> the Doc. 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 Really, uh, <laughs> speaking of people who are about to fall asleep, I think they need to get Wilbon some sugar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poor Wilbon, Uncle Mike. He's usually in bed by now. He's an East Coaster like me. Can't hold it against him. Jalen's still going strong, though. Yeah. He probably had some Cheetos. Jalen somehow lost like 40 pounds, but still eats Cheetos because he always had this Cheetos. He looks great. 
He was on this whole Cheetos thing. I like the Cheetos too. I used to get him coffee, and he and whenever he tried to like shake my hand, I'd he'd have orange from, he'd stuff have on orange his hands. hands. Yeah. yeah, that was his thing. So here are the guys left for the Celts: Isaiah Hartenstein, best available. Juwan Evans. Oh, the SMU kid. People like him too, right? Yeah, Simi. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan Bell. Yeah, I think Jordan Bell. Can we take Jordan Bell? Yeah, you'd be excited for that. Yeah. All right, sure. House. This will be our, the pick is in House. <laughs> the pick is in. House is asleep, but the pick is in. Oh, that was another bet we like. Nigel <laughs> Nigel Williams Goss. We yeah, like that one too. Okay. Was it? It was like whether he'd get drafted or not. Yeah, he's he's like fifty nine, sixty range, right? Just happy for him to get. Drafted. Even Thornwell takes Indarius Thornwell, so you don't have to resign. Is he available? Yeah, he hadn't been drafted. I like him, by the way. Yeah. Hey, how's like congratulations on Tim Frazier? I love Tim Frazier. You know what? We've been dying for a, a legit backup point guard. You the, the so when are you going to get the one? Wizards because <laughs> well, I mean, considering oh, uh, hold on, the picks in the, <laughs> the Celtics select. Oh, I think they took the SMU Semi, guys. Semi. Lips. Semi, great pick. Oh, I'm ahead of you. It's a good one, right? Yeah, we like good. that pick. It's a great pick. Yeah. She've gone the first round. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was going to go twenty-two to the Nets. What a great, what a great one to end on, House. Congratulations. Oh, he's got kind of the Marcus Smart hair going a little bit. He's like Jay, early... he's like Jay Crowder a little bit, but he's a better shooter. Oh, does that mean my dad's going to be grumbling about him? No, he's a great shooter. Mm. All right, House. Thanks for staying up late for us. Even though it makes me sad that late for you is eleven twenty on a Thursday night, but thank you anyway. Oh, he transferred from yeah, Duke. No wonder Tate likes him. Yeah. This guy transferred from Duke, House. <laughs> I love Duke defectors. House, good luck with your podcast next week. All right. Thanks, fellas. All right. Bye.